Act Five of the Family of Love by Thomas Middleton, Thomas Decker, and Lord Ingberry. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Act Five, Scene One A Room in Glister's House. Enter Dr. Glister and Mistress Glister this was your colour to keep her clothes but what cloak have you for hers and your own shame what your own niece your brother's daughter besides your bastard in the country wife range not too far i would advise you come home in time vex me not beyond sufferance the two-edged sword of thy tongue hath drawn blood o me patience i say thou art all this while in an error no thou hast been all this while in a urinal thou hast gone out of thy compass in women's waters you're a conjurer forsooth and can rouse your spirits into circles ah you old fornicator that ever i saw that red beard of thine now could i rail against thy complexion i think in my conscience the traces and caparison of venus coach are made of red hairs which may be a true emblem that no flaxen stuff or tent white leather draws love like them i think thou manurest thy chin with the droppings of eggs and muscadine before it bristled a shame take thee and thy loadstone but this no matter master placket the parator has cited you and you shall answer it oh the raging jealousy of a woman do you hear wife i will show myself a man of sense and answer you with silence or like a man of wisdom speak in brief i say you are a scold and beware the cucking stool exit i say you are a ninny hammer and beware the cuckoo for as sure as i have wear i'll traffic with the next merchant venturer and in good time here comes gallants of the right trade enter Lipsolve and gudgeon and glister behind watching them all alone mistress glister meditating who shall be your next child's father indeed methinks that should be one end of her thought and be but to cry quittance with her husband of whose abuse the town rings glister aside flax and fire flax and fire here are fellows come in the nick to light their matches at my tinder he tells you true mistress glister the doctor hath made you ordinary in our ordinaries satires whet their tooths and steep rods in piss epigrams lie in poetry's pickle and we shall have rhyme out of all reason against you ere long he will take up his station at a stationer's where we shall see him do penance in a sheet at least oh i am nettled my patience is so provoked that i must doff my modesty what shall i do if you be honest gentlemen counsel me in my revenge teach me what to do make my case your own why you are in the common road of revenge take which hand you will you cannot go out of your way tis as soon taken as time by his forepart faith since he has struck with the sword strike you with the scabbard in plain terms cuckold him you may as easily do it as lie down o'er your bed Gloucester, aside this gear cottons a faith i apprehend you gentlemen lord how much better are two heads than one to make one large head you say true mistress glister there's help required in grafting and how happily we come to tender our service let our pretence be to take physic of the doctor and that he may with as much ease minister to us as we to you we'll take a lodging in his house how say you to this is the colour good dost like you passing well the colour is so good that you shall wear my favour out of the same piece excellent excellent now shall we be revenged for the whipping mistress glister let me be your first man nay soft sir i plied her as soon as you Glister, aside. I should have an oar in her boat too, by right. How ill-advised were you to marry one with a red beard. 
oh master lipsalf i am not the first that has fallen under that ensign there is no complexion more attractive in this time for women than gold and red beards such men are all liver ay but small heart and less honesty yes they are honest too in some kind for they'll beg before they'll steal that's true for for one that holds up his hands at the sessions you shall have ten come into the baldy court Glister, aside was ever beard so backbitten this were enough to make red beards turn medley and dash em clean out of countenance but i hope like mine they fear no colours and you were ten courtiers out front you i must give you physic with a pox well i'll pepper ye not call me dr doddy paul comes forward master lipsolve and master gudgeon you are heartily welcome i am very glad to see you well oh master doctor your salutation is very suspicious why master lipsolve it can scarce be hearty for physicians are rather glad to see men ill than well not so sir you must distinguish of men though this i know virtue is not the end of all science which commonly keeps the professor poor some study questuary and gainful arts and every one would thrive in's calling but if faith gentlemen what wind drives you hither the wind colic master doctor or oh, oh, some such disease but not the stone colic oh no sir we have no obstructions in those parts we are loose enough there if you were troubled with that my wife can tell you of an excellent remedy we need it not we need it not but indeed master doctor for some private infirmities which our waters shall make known to you we desire to take some physic of you for a few days and to that end we would take a lodging in your house during the time shall we entreat your favour no entreaty gentlemen you shall command me to search the very profundity of my skill for you have them in wife and show them their lodging i will think upon another receipt and follow you immediately and if faith we shall requite your pains to the full exeunt mistress glister lipsolve and gudgeon to the fool you mean i know you have a horn of plenty for me which you would derive unto me from the liberality of your bodies not your minds here are lords that having learned the o p q of courtship travel up and down among citizens wives to show their learning and bringing up as if the city were not already a good proficient in the court horn-book yes i warrant they have heads as capable as other men ay and some of them can wisely say with the philosopher that in knowing all they know nothing well because i am the livery and pay scot and lot amongst you do but observe how i'll fetch over my gallants for your sakes they say i am of the right hair and indeed they may stand to it and hold the position good saving with my wife soft are they not at pro and contra already i know they are hot spurs and i must have an eye to the main they have been whipped already for lettery and yet the pride of the flesh pricks em well i must in i have given them such a pill shall take em down for lust must have his fill exit scene two another room in glister's house enter maria above now nature's pencil and the hand of time gives life and limb to generation's act my shame and guilt in wordless notes appear the argument of scorn oh now i stand the theme and comment to each liberal tongue whilst hope breeds comfort and fear threats my wrong o oh, geraldine how oft thy lively figure deeply impressed in my yielding temper assures me thou art mine how fancy paints thy true proportion in my troubled sleep because sole subject of my daily thoughts o oh, if thy vows prove feigned and thou unjust i say and swear in men there is no trust enter gerardine thus have i passed the round and court of guard without the word either conceit is strong 
or else the body where true love's confined walks as a spirit and doth force his way through greatest dangers frightful to those eyes that wait to intercept him maria how like to cynthia in her silver orb she seems to me attended by love's lamp whose mutual influence and so sympathy doth show heaven's model in mortality Geraldine? aurora nor the blushing sun's approach dart not more comfort to this universe than thou to me most acceptably come the art of number cannot count the hours thou hast been absent infinity of love holds no proportion with arithmetic think not maria but my heart retains a deep impression of such thoughts as these i have been forging of a mirthful plot to celebrate our wished conjunction which now digested come to summon thee to be an actress in the comedy how where when speak mine ears are quick to hear i stand on thorns already to be there at dryfat's house the merchant there's our scene whose sequel if i fail not in intent shall answer our desires in each content but when sawest thou lips of and gudgeon our two gallants they are in the house so handled by mine uncle that they are the pitifulest patience that ever you beheld no matter he serves them in their kind they were infamous in the court and now are grown as notorious in the city they may happily prove particles in our sport and fit subjects for laughter time calls me hence adieu prepare to meet i shall outstrip the nimblest in my feet exeunt severally scene three a room in dryfat's house enter dryfat disguised as a proctor and club as a crier come club come there's a merry fray towards we shall see the death of melancholy wherein thou and i must call a grand jury of jests together and pass upon them with the club law now as i am all the crier and yet but a young club i have not yet practised that law you have a whole dry fat aunt i pray you instruct me why tis a law enacted by the common council of statute caps to qualify the rage of the time to follow to call back and sometimes to encounter gentlemen when they run in arrearages i tell thee there's no averment against our bookcases tis the law called make peace and it makes them even when they're at odds it shows em a flat case as plain as a packstaff that is knocks em down without circumstance ay mary i like that law well tis studied with the turning of a hand there's no quidditch nor peddler's french in it there needs no book for the exposition of the terms tis as easily learned as the felling of wood and getting of children all is but laying on load the downright blow ay and by the way of exhortation it prints this moral sentence on their costards in capital letters agree for the law is costly good good but all this while there's no doctor thought on we must have one to arbitrate why master gerardine man has his name for the purpose he shall be called dr stickler lupus est in fabula here he comes enter gerardine how now lads does our conceit cotton how you summoned your wits from wool gathering are you fraught with matter for this merriment fool fool we are in labour man and we shall die without midwifery we are ravaged with delight like the wench that was got with child against her stomach oh but if we could rest this smock law now in hand to our club law it were excellent easily easily all shall be called the club law as how why thus club is the crier i am poppin the proctor and you stickler the doctor he calls them to appear i must be of their counsel and you must atone them put them together we may know their cases and be in their elements mark you me but they cannot be in ours tut none knows our secrets we can speak fustian above their understanding and make asses ears attentive i'll play ambidexter tell him tis a plain case and put him down with the club law so that as club said well e'en now 
our knavery is as near allied as felling of wood and getting of children excellent excellent by this they are at hand let's bear these things like ourselves i'll withdraw and put on my habiliments and then enter for the doctor do so they come they come exit gerardine enter glister and purge welcome master doctor glister and master purge there's a commission to be set upon this day to open a passage for imprisoned truth concerning acts yet in tenebris true i am brought hither by the malice of my wife and i have a just appeal against my wife master poppin so i think you are called i understand you have the law at your fingers ends i can box cases and scold and scratch it out amongst them indeed fame reports you to be a good trumpeter of causes i must retain you sir to sound mine my sackbut shall do it most pathetically tell me in brief the nature of your case faith sir a scandalous letter devised to wrong my reputation about a bastard in the country which should be mine about a bastard in the country which should be yours hm tis very like you then it should seem oh no sir understand me only fathered upon me only fathered upon you cum nemini obrudi potest i understand you and like you well too you do not flatter yourself in your own case no it is not good well what more and about my niece got with child in my own house by our lady burdens of some weight which you make light of you deny what else sir i have reason i know it well i take you for no beast believe me master doctor denial and reason are two main grounds stand upon them and you cannot err your case master purge first take your fee master poppin that you may have the more feeling and urge it home when you come to it giving money mine is a discovery of my wife's iniquity at the family of love otherwise called the house of venery where they hunger and thirst for it true sir you have heard of the hole in the wall where they assemble together in the daytime like so many bees under a hive come home cruratima plena and lodge among hornets is not so i cannot tell sir but for my part i am much noted as i go no doubt of that sir your wife can furnish you with notes out of her quotations ay and give him a two-tagged point to tie him together but how came you to detect her why thus sir get in the word i dogged her to the family where closing with her i whispered so pleasing a tale in her ear that i got from her her wedding ring and here tis well out of that ring we will wring matter that shall carry me to the mouth but what witness or proof can you produce to make good your wife's iniquity and your own cuckoldry master lipsalve and master gudgeon who were her companions at that same time very good are they cited in the quorum nomina they will be here sir if they be they will be ray all so much the better it will save a well for master purge you understand my case now and mine too sir i do i do they are as different as a doctor and a dunce a man and a beast here's the compendium yours master doctor stands upon the negative and yours master purge upon the affirmative parca sapienti i had i had mine is very current sir i can show you good guilt i marry their spoken angel guilt's current indeed let me feel it let me feel it i mean my wife's guilt master poppin you shall have innocence to speak for me tut innocence is a fool i care not for his company i can speak enough without him then i hope you will be as good to us as the five-finger at maw 
no rather as hercules to lip labour him with the club law tut let me alone enter mistress gloucester mistress purge and maria oh here you are sir i have brought you a full barn to glut your greedy appetite if you have any more feed here till you choke again now shall i see the whole carcass of your knavery ripped up if thou hast any grace now will thy red beard turn white upon it oh how have i been tossed from post to pillar in this libidinous world the yoke i bear is so uneven as if an innocent lamb and a mad hare-brained ox should draw together but i must have patience there's no remedy there's some difference between these two tempers Worcester aside i would give a hundred pounds my wife had so gentle a spirit purge aside my wife must needs be gentle for she can bear double re-enter gerardine disguised as a doctor here comes master doctor now rig up your vessels every one to his tackling good day to all at once and peace amongst you far how i sweat i think vulcan ne'er toiled so at his anvil as i have done and all to make maids water to slake cupid's fire and to turn his shafts from the feather-bed to the bedpost from the heart to the heel come master poppin shall we to this gear reverend doctor we have stayed your coming crier cry silence he cries master doctor i have heard in general terms the tales of master doctor glister and master purge which have in mutual manner jumped into the quagmire of my mind out of which quagmire by your enforcement and mine own duty i pluck them up by the ears and thus in naked appearance i present them adrim adrim master poppin leave your allegories your metaphors and circumlocutions and to the point then briefly thus i have compared their tables how short they will come of their wives i know not and first for mistress purge crier call mistress purge rebecca purge wife to peter purge pothecary appear upon thy purgation upon pain of excommunication here i am o oh, time's impiety hither i come from out the harmless fold to have my good name eaten up by wolves see how they grin well the weak must to the wall i must bear wrong but shame shall them before who is her accuser her own husband upon the late discovery of a crew of narrow roughed straight-laced yet loose-bodied dames with a rout of omnium gatherums assembled by the title of the family of love which master doctor if they be not punished and suppressed by our club law each man's copyhold will become freehold specialties will turn to generalities and so from unity to parity from parity to plurality and from plurality to universality their wives the only ornaments of their houses and of all their wares goods and chattels the chief movables will be made common most voluble and eloquent proctor by our lady these enormities must and shall be redressed otherwise i see their charter will be infringed and their ancient staff of government the club from whence we derive our law for castigation this club i say they seeming nothing less than men by their forepart will be turned upon their own heads speak rebecca perch art thou one of this family hast thou ever known the body of any man there or elsewhere concupiscentically no master doctor those are but devices of the wicked to trap the innocent but i thank my spirit i have fear before my eyes which my husband sees not because something hangs in its light purge aside that's my horns she flouts me to my face and i will not endure it i shall carry her mark to my grave master doctor she has given me that that aesculapius were he now extant could not heal nor edax rerum take away 
produce your witness master perch and blow not your own horn master lipsalve and master gudgeon let them be called lawrence lipsalve and gregory gudgeon late of hick and ubique in the country of nusquam gentlemen come into the court and give your evidence upon pain of that which shall ensue enter lipsalve and gudgeon here they come in pain i warrant them how works your physic gallants do you go well to the ground now cuckold the doctor wife who's your first man now now strike with the scabbard ha 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 a villainous doctor mountebank you're a rascal and we will cast about to be revenged cast about this way and bewray what you can concerning mistress purge who stands here upon her purgation either to prove mundified or contaminated according to the tenor piece of your principal evidence first give em the book come lay your hands upon the book you shall speak and aver no more nor wade no further into the cream pots of this woman's crime than the naked truth and the cart rope of your conscience shall conduct you so help you the contents kiss the book alas we are not in case to answer largely but if you will have our evidence in brief i think i kissed her at the family some three times once at coming once at going and once in the midst otherwise never knew her dishonestly ay mark that middle kiss master doctor and for my part i have been more mortified by her than ever i was <laughs> how say you to this master perch your witness is weak and sir reference on it without sound of proof they may depart to the close stool whence they came and you to your apothecary shop no master doctor i have another bolt to shoot that shall strike her dead she shall not have a word to say answer me to this mistress purge where's your wedding ring my wedding ring why what should i do with the necessary things about me when the poor begs at my gate ready to starve is this not better as i learned last lecture to send my substance before me where i may find it than to leave it behind me where i must forego it yes verily wherefore to put ye out of doubt i have given that ring to charitable users nay now she falters my client can show that ring got from her at the family when these two courtlings had at the same time beleaguered her fort this alters the case clean what starting hold have you now mistress perch e'en the sanctuary of a safe conscience now truly truly however he came by that ring by my sisterhood i gave it to the relief of the distressed geneva how to the relief of the distressed geneva justice master doctor i may now decline victus victa victum one word more shall overthrow her i myself was a familist that day who more jealous than zealous in devotion thrust in among the rest as i had most right on purpose to sound her to find out the knavery short tale to make i got her ring and here it is let her deny it if she can and what more i discovered non est nunc narandi locus husband i see you are hoodwinked in the right to use of feeling and knowledge as if i knew you not then as well as the child knows his own father look in the posy of my ring does not tell you that we two are one flesh and hath not fellow feeling taught us to know one another as well by night as by day husband husband will you do as the blind jade break your neck down a hill because you see it not how you know light of nature in that flesh of yours now as true as i live master doctor i had a secret operation and i knew him then to be my husband e'en by very instinct impudence dost not blush art not ashamed to lie so abominably 
No, husband. Rather be you ashamed of your own weakness. For, for my part, I neither fear nor shame what man can do unto me. Master Perch, I see you have spent your pith. Therefore best make a full point at the ring, and attend our pleasure. Master Poppin, proceed to the rest. Crier, call Dr. Glister. Dr. Glister, alias suppositor doctor of physic, appear upon thy purgation, upon the belly pain that may ensue therein. Here, Master Doctor. Who is this accuser? His clamorous wife, who seems to enforce a separation about a bastard in the country, which should be his, only fathered upon him. What proof of that? Proof unanswerable, Master Doctor. The nurse's letter. Let it be read, but first observe his countenance. It may be his blushing will bewray his guilt. Now by this light I thought it had indeed, but I see tis but the reflection of his beard. Read the letter, Master Poppin. Dry fat reads. After my hearty commendations remembered unto your worshipful doctorship, trusting in God that you are as well as I was at the making hereof, thanks be to him therefore. The cause of my writing unto you at this time is to let you understand that your little son is turned a ragged colt, a very stripling. For being now stripped of all his clothing, his backside wants a tailpiece, commends itself to your fatherly consideration. Woe worth the time that ever I gave suck to a child that came in at the window. God knows how. Yet if you did but see how like the pert little red-headed knave is to his father, and how like a cock-sparrow he mouses and touses my little bess already, you would take him for your own and pay me my hire. I write not of the want of one thing, for I want all things. Wherefore take some speedy order, or else as naked as he came from the mother will I send him to the father. From Pierce and Hay, the twenty-second, your poor nurse, Thomasine Tweedles. Master Doctor, truth needs not the foil of rhetoric. I will only in monosyllaba answer for myself, as sometimes a wise man did. Such and such things are laid to my charge, which I deny. You may think of me what you please, but I am as innocent in this as the child newborn. Why, there's partly a confession. The child we know is innocent, and not newborn either, for it should seem by the letter he is able to call his dad knave. You take me wrong, Master Doctor. Under correction, thus much can I say for my client's justification. Indeed, he hath travelled well in the beating of pulses, and hath been much conversant in women's Jordans. But he had ever a care to raise his patient being before cast down. His charitable disposition hath been such to poor folk that he never took above fourpence for the casting of a water, which good custom was so well known among all his patients that if sixpence were at any time offered him, they might be bold to ask and have tuppence again. He hath been so skilful and painful withal in the cure of the green sickness, that of my knowledge he hath risen at all hours in the night to pleasure maids that have had it and for that foul-mouthed disease termed by a fine phrase uh, a poxant what do you call it oh the grincombs at that he hath played his doctor's prize and writes nil ultra to all mountebanks so that the wise woman in pissing alley nor she in doolittle lane are more famous for good deeds than he then master doctor out of these presumptions Besides his flat denial, a more infallible ground, you may gather his innocence, and let him have his purgation. No, Master Poppin, it is not so to be foisted off. Nay, Master Doctor, what say you to his own niece that looks big upon him? An arrow that sticks for the upshot against all comers, which by his restraint of her from Master Geraldine, an honest gentleman that loved her, and upon that colour from the sight and intercourse of other men must by all presumptions be his own act oh monstrous this is a foul blot in your tables indeed wife thou hast no shame nor womanhood in thee thy conscience knows me 
true of thy flesh who knows not that thy beard speaks for thee ay ay thou liest by me like a stone but abroad thou art like a stone horse you old limb lifter cease your clamour and attend my speech most worshipful reverend and judicial doctor for the quickening of your memory i will give you a breviate of all that hath been spoken master doctor glister hath a cradleful and a bellyful you see thrust upon him and master purge a headful your wife is an angry honeyless wasp whose sting i hope you need not fear and yours carries honey in her mouth but her sting makes your forehead swell <laughs> your wife makes you deaf with the shrill treble of her tongue and yours makes you horn mad with the tenor of her tail in fine master doctor's refuge is his conscience and master purge runs at his wife's ring Shuma totalis a good audit how you made master poppin now attend my arbitrement for you gallants though you have incurred the danger of the law by using counterfeit keys and putting your hands into the wrong pocket yet because i see you punished and purged already my advice is that you learn the a b c of better manners go back and tell how you have been used in the city and being thus scoured keep yourselves clean and the bed undefiled for you master perch because i see your evidence insufficient and indeed too weak to foil your wife's uprightness and seeing jealousy and unkindness hath only made her a stranger in your land of ham my counsel is that you readvance your standard give her new press money you may enjoin me sir but but not at me man i will enjoin you and conjoin you and briefly thus you have your ring that has made this combustion an uproar that keep still swear it and here by my edict be it proclaimed to all that are jealous to wear their wives ring still on their fingers as best for their security and the only charm against cuckoldry then wife at master doctor's enjoinment so thou wilt promise me to come no more at the family i receive thee into the lists of my favour truly husband my love must be free still to god's creatures yea nevertheless preserving you still as the head of my body i will do as the spirit shall enable me go to thou hast a good wife and there an end upon you o master doctor being solicited by so apparent proof i can do no less than pronounce a severe sentence and yet to faith the reverence of your calling and profession doth somewhat check my austerity what if master geraldine by my persuasion would yet be induced to take your niece and father the child would you launch with a thousand pound besides a father's portion master doctor i would would it but to redeem her lost good name then for knowing what would happen i thought good in master geraldine's name to have this bond ready which if you seal too he shall take her with all faults that i will instantly seals the bond so this is done which together with my niece do i deliver by these presents to the use of master geraldine he thanks you heartily and lets you know geraldine dryfat and club discover themselves that indian mines and tagus's glistering ore to this bequest were unto me but poor what geraldine dryfat and club the very same <laughs> you are welcome to our club law cease admiration here what doubt remains i'll satisfy it full now join with me for approbation of our family epilogue gentles whose favour have o'erspread this place and shed the real influence of grace on harmless mirth we thank you for our hope attracts such vigour and unmeasured scope from the reflecting splendor of your eyes that grace presumed fear in oblivion dies your judgment as it is the touch and trier of good from bad so from your hearts comes fire that gives both ardor to the wit refined and sweetens the incense of each willing mind 
O may that fire ne'er die, Nor let your favors depart from us. Give countenance to their labors Proposed a sacrifice, Which may no less their strong desires Than our true zeals express. Exeunt End of Act 5 End of The Family of Love By Thomas Middleton, Thomas Decker, and Lording Barry